and welcome to South to North, coming to you from Johannesburg. Is freedom of speech always a right, or only when it suits national agendas? Opening night at the Durban International Film Festival, audiences sat in anticipation as the lights dimmed, but were instead informed that the film had been banned. In Cameroon, this year, an independent film called Le President was also banned. Independent voices struggle to survive as blockbuster movies straddle the world. Yet these filmmakers can inspire and tell us about our world in new and critical ways. But how will they survive when they are also sometimes subject to national censorship that can be used to silence dissent? Today, we catch up with some of the independent filmmakers in the Global South. Welcome to Jamil Kubega, director of the recently banned film of Good Report. Jean-Pierre Piccolo, Cameroonian director of the band Le President. And Joao Vienna, who directed The Battle of Tabato in Guinea-Bissau. Welcome. Thank you, Siswam. So your film of Good Report was banned recently. Why? Well, according to the Film and Publication Board, um, in terms of their interpretation of the law that dictates what they do, um, we satisfied their criteria of what is termed as child pornography. So they watched 28 minutes and 16 seconds of the film, and then they said, whoop, we've got enough evidence to substantiate our claim, and we're banning this film. Perhaps tell us then what the film's about, if it's not child pornography. Uh, it's your classic tale of lust, uh, shameful lust. Between a teacher and his yeah, pupil. It's, yeah, it's about a, 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 what I would term an inadequate man, because he gravitates towards um, this one particular teenager, a stunning uh, 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 lady by the name of Nolita, played by Petronella Chuma. He starts this illicit re relationship with her, and then he becomes obsessed with her, to a point that he, he cannot see that he's obsessed with a child. And it's about his behavior. Uh, the title is of good report, which means someone of good reputation. And what I'm saying with the film, I'm making an indictment I'm saying basically to parents out there, hey, I know we have busy lives, but let's take the time before we pass our children on to these wolves. Who are the people that you take your kids to every day to, 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 to be educated by? Do you know who they are? So you're trying to warn society, would yeah, you say? Yeah, completely. That's what the film is. Mm. Were you mm. surprised that it was banned? Um, nothing surprises me in South Africa anymore, to be honest with you. We have people who work in these departments who make certain claims without understanding the, um, the, the, the gravitas of what they're saying. So perhaps the people who make decisions about films don't understand what the I know purpose of filmmaking. And making. I'll tell you why. All of them tend to have a religious and conservative background. And uh, they appoint these people who completely sit outside of this industry. They say they're protecting the morality of the nation. Fine, substantiate it. Be clear about what you're saying. So see, I'm not sad for me. This has turned me into a superstar. My life has changed in a week. I've been on Variety magazine. Ask any filmmaker, wouldn't you love to be on Variety? I've been on Variety three you times. You wanted this. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but what I am sad for, and let me be clear, is my nation. Because my nation was refused the right to see my film. Okay, let's just see what the whole furore is all about. Just a clip from your film. You are breaking the law. Let's see. <laughs> What you're seeing here is a montage that basically explains the entire relationship. As you can see, this young girl is now to her older man, appealing to him, telling him, hey, I'm pregnant. So this is a, a consequence of, of, of what has happened. At this point, we've gone quite far in the story, and our man has really gone over the edge. He's gone psycho, and he's... Some chilling scenes there. <laughs> yeah. Very chilling. That was the intention. Yeah. You want to for scare me, us? For, for teenagers, this is a horror film. I want kids to go into cinemas, especially girls, watch this thing, and I want to scare them. We reflect the societies that we live in. I'm a pretty creative guy, but I can't take full credit for the world that I've created in my film. The world that is there is a world that my government is custodian of. Do you see this as an independent film, and in what way is it? It's 
crucial that it's, a, it's an independent work. And I will remain independent because what I've learned in my 12 years as a filmmaker is that we're being steered in a particular direction. Are there parts of you in that film that we've just seen? In what way is it Jamil's story? I believe I've been able to depict and give insight into a fractured mind. It's a psychological thriller, you know? And um, because of my background, because of the experience of, gro uh, of, of growing up in the dichotomy of apartheid and uh, living in the township, I think I have insight into how the criminal, criminal mind works. So yeah, there's a bit of Jamil. There's, that's all Jamil. All right, so Jean-Pierre, let's see your film, Le President, which was banned in Cameroon. Let's see this clip. The question that I pose today is if I had to find a successor to this heavy task that is the President of the Republic, is a singer, a footballer, do you think you are ready to accept to endorse this responsibility? Is it you think that coming here, coming to meet me here, is going to solve the problem of all this youth that is still today Continue de vous regarder en se posant des questions sur qu'est-ce que vous allez faire de leur avenir. Je pense que tel était votre vœu. La lettre que vous m'avez adressée, Non. c'était dans le cadre de la jeunesse qui souffrait, qui ne trouvait pas du travail après des universités. Oui, mais ce n'était pas pour que vous veniez me voir. Vous voulez bien qu'on en parle, alors je suis là pour ça. Jean-Pierre, explain this film to us and what's going on in that clip. So the film, The President, uh, The President, uh, How Do You Know It's Time To Go? Because that's part of the title. It's a story of an aging man uh, who is surrounded by all kind of uh, um, uh, complots going on and who's deciding to leave the town to go to his village as usual in his car with his driver and bodyguards and get lost on the road. Uh, so, and while he's in the, that journey, it's uh, the moment where he starts realizing his kind of failure, really. And uh, the whole story is also uh, going along with all the media uh, that are kind of commenting the disappearance of the president. Uh, so that's really what the story is about. Is it a political film? It's very interesting to ask that question because I think um, what we see happening now is the very definition of cinema. I think we forget w that cinema was born with different type of films. So uh, cinema hasn't been just as entertainment. You know, cinema has been playing a social function. Cinema has been political. So I think by having an intervention in the society, it's a way, it's a way of being political. So I, I really think right now we have forgotten the, the very nature of cinema in the first place. The cinema is not neutral. So um, very clearly, this is what is happening in Cameroon. We have an aging president who's been there 80 years. Uh, just to tell you, he was minister in 1962. Barack Obama was one years old. So he's been there for- He went to born. He, he's been there forever. Obviously people say it's like anticipation movie, but you don't have to be a genius to think that an 80, 80 years old man can go one day. So just by saying this, in Cameroon it's almost considered crime. Is that why it was banned? Yeah, it's like they say that you, you, you're putting the country at, in danger to say that an 80 years old man can not even die, go one day. And um, also considering that he spends half of the year almost in Switzerland. So he's, he's trying to be president in a country he doesn't even want to live in. So making a film just to kind of anticipate and start a conversation about what will happen, you know, when he leaves or if he leaves. That's really what the film is about. And I think when you see all the Congo, the Cote d'Ivoire, these are very long presidents mm. who stay in power and then you have 20 years of war afterwards. Films always come when everything is over. Why? You know, why cinema can't be there long with, even before the problem? To reflect what is happening What is at happening that so time. that we can fix it, anticipate. Because everybody will give me money to make a film once the president is gone to say how bad he was or something like this. How do you raise money or how did you even raise money to make a film like this knowing that in Cameroon it may actually be banned because as you say, people are reluctant to talk about a sitting president in that manner? Way actually was banned. It was a letter coming from the president's office to the minister of culture, blaming her to have given money to a film that is insulting the president. <coughs> actually, they didn't give me money, but they thought, and they even come and search the minister of culture's office. So they didn't actually send it directly to me. So just to understand the kind of system. Did you did you ask through. them for money though? No, no, for this film, obviously no. All the institutions financing African cinema refused to back this film. 
when they All found out what it was about. Uh, um, uh, and that's very interesting because you hear EU refused, you know, Francophonie refused. And I even received a letter from the ambassador of France in Cameroon, you know, f uh, asking the French Institute not to show the film because it was for him an internal affair of Cameroon and it, was it would create trouble. Joao, let's bring you into the conversation here. You were born in Angola, yes. lived in Portugal, but you've made a film about Guinea-Bissau. How did that come about? I was in Berlin and I, I, I've, I've listened to a musician, a musician, uh, a German musician, very young, that told me that his dream is go to a small village in the middle of Guinea-Bissau who everybody is musician. And for me, this was a click because when I was in Angola, uh, the fathers send the kids to Germany to learn music. And now it's the contrary. So maybe it's, for me, it, it was the beginning of the change everything, our perspective in the United States and in, in Europe, how we see the, uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. you know? So tell us about the plot then of the film, what it aimed what to do I as tell, well. What, what, I, what I told to the financiers is I want to make a film about the village of musicians in the middle of war. Mm -hmm. And it's true because after the, the 30 years ago, the political situation was it's very fragile. Mm. So uh, this small village of musicians in a, in a country with a slave mentality. Uh, it, it's, it's the beginning of something because they are not slaves, they are kings, you know. And the, okay. uh, yeah. In fact, let's see a clip from your phone. Thank you very much. Masters of War. Alikulu Balia Kanya. Manko Shirono. Munna. Malo. Joao, let's bring these two clips together. The first one was painful and very powerful to me. The children are playing with pretend guns and there's, old, there's an old man who's been traumatized by war and he wets himself. Tell us what happened and the transition to that last clip that we just saw. His child is going to die with this problem that he's, he has in mind. And uh, in the end, uh, the, everybody in the village uh, made a battle against the sounds that these men uh, listen. And uh, this battle, it's a, uh, it's, it's a battle of sounds. And it's, it's, there's a bit of history telling there. How important is it to depict that African history? Uh, it's very important because it's, 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 it's the perspective of, colon, colon, it's always the perspective of, of colonialism, you know, because uh, these people are fragile with the, the, the last colonialism and now maybe is prepared to a new colonialism and this is the danger. Uh, what I learned in school and even later is, is completely wrong. I learned in school that uh, the man came from Africa, this is obviously, but the man, the, the modern culture was born in Europe. Europe. It's wrong. Even the, the Egyptians, they tell us that the Egyptians are, are white people. Why? Why? Because they talk, the old Egyptian is the, the, the same language of the Olaf, actual, you know? 
to film, earlier. we can no. correct all of those wrongs. Yeah. But here's something else I want to explore. You didn't get any money, Jean-Pierre, from the government. You didn't get any money from the government. Isn't that a positive thing? Because it means then that you can't be pigeonholed into producing a certain type of film. If you had received money, would you have produced the same film? Oh, no, not at all. When I was 22, 23, it didn't matter. Okay, I'll say whatever I want. You want to put me in prison, you want to do whatever, hey, you know. But now I've got considerations. I've got kids, I've got a wife. The risks have gotten bigger. However, though, thank goodness, I've, I've, I've always had that, that level that I will not be policed. My thoughts will not be policed, especially by people who clearly show an inability to think. Jean-Pierre, what do you think about not getting funding from the government? It's good. It frees you to do what you want to do. So you think now we should all get into the market economy and then the state should disappear if you continue. You know, why are we citizens who are not allowed to live in our own country doing our job you know, because the government is supposed to organize life for everybody. This is actually a sector, you know, that gives you know, jobs, that is like all the creativity. Can you imagine most of the creative Cameroonian and many other Africans end up in Europe, the musicians, but why is that, you know? Why is that that oh, they all actually dance on the same music, but all the musicians have to live in Paris, in London, or whatever. So I think there is something wrong in what this, uh, we've developed uh, all over Africa as free, independent, mm. and proud, you know, Africans. Joao, what are your thoughts on that, the independent film? Uh, I think it's, um, cinema and money, they are uh, brothers. So, um, yes, of course, if, if we don't have too much money, we don't have to, to... So how do you get the money without the policing, without the state looking over you all the time? Well, you find other troublemakers, hopefully richer ones. But one thing, Sissy, that I do want to just put across, that our government doesn't seem to realize, is that <clears throat> self-reflection, right, is the only way you can develop. And we are the mirrors of our society. It's a privilege to do what we do. We are the mirrors of our society. And if we are living in an age where our government is putting down draconian policies, you know, that don't allow self-reflection. Instead, we showcase um, a world that is actually not real. How are we gonna get to a process of actually seeing where we are? The legacy is scary. Jean-Pierre? Oh yeah, one of the things, I mean, maybe I would disagree with Jamil here, is the fact that for me, we don't have to be telling what is going on to not be censored. And I think censorship, it's a matter of principle. I think it's one of the rights, freedom of expression. And why freedom of expression is like uh, almost like a human right is because who is allowed to tell you what you should say, who's not allowed to tell you what you should say. Jamil's film was not made to sell pornography so for people who want to watch like sex scenes or whatever. So I think uh, it's very important to, to understand that principle because if we start saying you should talk, you shouldn't talk, you know, at the end of the day, there's always one group that can talk and the other one that can't talk. And I think that's what democracy is about. When should a film be banned, if ever? What do you think, Joao? And I want to get responses from all three of you. Let's start with you, Joao. In my case, my film is not banned because in Guinea-Bissau, there no, don't exist But generally, as a even. filmmaker, you may find yourself yeah. in a situation where your film yes, gets banned. Yes, I know, I know. But I, I, I think my film is banned too because I don't have cinemas to show the film in Guinea-Bissau or... Why is it not being shown? Because I, I need so much money. I have to take more two years to have money to have a car, a big car, with a projector, with a, a, a big screen, to show village in, in every village of Guinea-Bissau. It's a kind of censure, it's a kind of censure. economic censure. No? Okay, going back to my question earlier, I asked about films being banned. When should a film be banned? I have no problem with bodies like that. However, though, it needs to be in the public eye. Firstly, we police ourselves as filmmakers. It's a responsibility to do what I do. I have a very powerful tools to do all kinds of things and get into people's psyche. Now, because I have that, I understand that responsibility. Films should be banned when they show child pornography. Simple. Films should be banned when they exceed the, the sensibilities so of where they are. So there should be boundaries. There should be regulatory Very clear ones, but they need to be clear and substantiated. Jean-Pierre, when should a film be yeah. banned? Personally, I still think film shouldn't be banned. You know? And one of the things that is very important is that, uh, obviously, if you do something that is out of the law, you know, that's 
lot take care of it, but it's not a film for us, you know? So it's an image, because all images are not films. You know, maybe. And that's one of the other thing for this uh, film is that uh, this is a festival. It's not even now released. So festivals are a place for experts. You know? And if there's a committee that is has to get advice, it can only get advice from professionals. But the, the feeling, and that's general across the whole continent, is that cinema is scaring our leaders. You know? Uh, they know that people don't read much, you know, uh, and I think um, uh, because obviously we can imagine why cinema could be scarier, and that's even why it's not being funded. Film are being made for a price of a car. Do you know how many cars are out there, you know? And even take pre presidential cars, <laughs> you even have, you know, bigger budget. What about uh, the returns on investment? Should the funders be concerned about that, or it is about the message that you are sending, challenging society, challenging us to reimagine our world differently? Should films be, be, be funded anyway, even if they're not making money? Well, again, for me now, film is the definitive uh, art form of the 21st century. The reason why I can say that is because it encompasses all of the other mediums, you know. And um, again, culturally, it's important for ourselves to be to reflect the world that we live in. I'm not sitting there making a film and thinking, okay, I, I want to show the, um, the, the country what kind of president uh, lives here. No, I'm making films to get particular messages across and to entertain. For you, Jean-Pierre, is it society that's not able to deal with the message in your film or the decision makers? Obviously, it's the decision maker in my case, you know, and I think the source, we don't live in, I mean, South Africa is, I think, one of the greatest countries in Africa for many reasons, but I think uh, we unfortunately live, you know, for the rest of Africa in countries where people don't really exist, you know, the democracy doesn't really exist, you know, and then uh, it's very difficult now to assess where people are because of all the brainwashing also, so um, I think um, uh, there's not one person, if I take the case of my film, in Cameroon who's not worried about the future of Cameroon, uh, what will happen once Paul Bia is gone. Uh, as African filmmakers, and in general, I speak in general here, a lot of African filmmakers I know, and I don't want to give names here, all of them have political films, but all of them have given up. You know, today, Africa is not in peace, we're not very developed, we even have foreign troops on the continent, but the films are now very, very nice, you know. Nothing is like, almost, we're not talking about anything Don't anymore. Don't rattle the cage. All of it you has know? to be mild. Mm -hmm. Are you optimistic about the future of film uh, in, in Africa? I'm optimistic about the, the, the African cinema. Mm -hmm. Europe, it's tired mm -hmm. of his own cinema and need fresh hair. Mm -hmm. And Africa can give this fresh hair. Jamil, are you optimistic or are you still very angry? <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> I'm extremely optimistic because um, I see the young filmmakers curious, wanting to know why this film was banned. And <clears throat> I think it's stirring up a new energy. It's not just this film. There's, there's been a succession of events that, that, that show me that the, um, of the optimism. And the major thing, which our government can never control, is the advent of technology. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you know, you needed a lot of things to make a film. Now you can be a one-man show. Well, we'll leave it there. All of you have expressed some optimism. And I must just say, it's the first time that I've had guests with all their names starting with the same alphabet. So oh, let's just yeah. say, <laughs> Jamil, Jean-Pierre, Joao, <laughs> let's say that has some significance <laughs> and there is a way forward for African cinema. Thank you, Thank you for, for joining me on sure. South to North. Well, these are interesting times for young filmmakers determined to express their independent visions. But the key question is, should artistic expression be an absolute right in democratic countries? Subsequent to our interview with Jamil Kubega on his film of Good Report, the film has been unbanned. It now carries an age restriction of 16 and the filmmaker may sue the South African Censorship Board for defamation. Thanks for watching South to North tonight. You can tweet your questions, comments, and opinions to at AJ South to North or find us on Facebook. See you next week. Bye-bye.